Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 25th of February 2019 and the time has just gone 11.45 GMT. Uh, it's been a fairly positive start to the European session uh, after a very strong finish in Asia overnight. Uh, essentially, the, the big story of the day is positive news in relation to US-Chinese trade. President Trump said that there was substantial progress made in, in trade talks and on top of that, um, the, the self-imposed early March deadline uh, for tariffs to be raised on Chinese imports have not been set back. Uh, so in, in the last few weeks, we've heard not much from the, from the US and China in terms of trade, but what we have heard has broadly been positive. There has been some suggestions that the deadline for the increase in tariffs is going to be set back, and now we've had that confirmation. So we saw a major push higher. Uh, in the stock market over in Shanghai, and we're seeing a positive start to the European session, and also we're expecting higher gains, respecting the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 to open higher. So the big story of the day is a uh, global equity sentiment has been raised on the back of improved trading relationships between the U.S. and China. Um, that's probably, let's say, the, by far the major story of the day. Other than that, it's been a fairly quiet day in terms of ec economic indicators. Uh, so we'll start off. Uh, by taking a look at the, the FTSE 100 and see how that's holding up. So the FTSE, like like most European mar equity markets, has been bouncing back since December, uh, and we, we can see here that volatil that the volatility has been r relatively low in the last few sessions. So, that, so, the, so the bounce back from December is still very much still in play. We just have failed to actually kind of make any kind of significant progress uh, beyond the, the highs of mid February. We're currently trading at 7,180. This region here, 7,220, um, still appears to be a big metric. Um, it actually has support on a couple of occasions uh, on the market was lower in September. And even though we have traded above it, the market has really found it difficult to actually tr hold above it and press on higher from there. So we're, we're still hang hanging in around that, in that, re in that region. Um, for the time being, the upper trend that we've been in place since the late December is still, is still very much in place. If you do manage to press on higher from here, and if you can take out 7,220, that area, we could look at heading beyond that up to the um, up, to, up to this area here, which comes up to this area of um, 7,230, 35, this area here from mid-February. And should we go beyond that, uh, keep an eye for this red line here, the 20 moving average, and that comes into play at 7,290. And if you go beyond that, uh, keep an eye out for the psychologically important 7,300. If you do, though, move to the downside. And if you take out the, uh, the recent lows of 7,141, we could be looking heading back down toward this area here in at uh, 7,065. And a move below that could take us back down towards this yellow line here, the uh, 100 day moving average, which comes into play just south of 7,000. Take a look at what's going on over in Germany. So the German market has pressed another multi-month high this morning. Uh, the upward trend that's been in place, and the bounce back that's been in place since late December is still very much intact. We've had a new multi-month high today, a level not seen since early, early December. Um, and if the market does manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 11,600. It's a big psychological number. And if we go beyond that, keep an eye out for the 11,700 region, this, this price area here. It acts fairly decent support uh, in, in the first few months of 2018, so it might act as resistance uh, if, should, should, should the market press on higher from here. If, though, the market does manage to turn over on itself, uh, there could be some areas, areas for support uh, to keep an eye out for. could be where this trend line comes into place in around the kind of 7,350 area. And a move below that could bring the 100-day moving average into play. Notice how it acted as resistance and both support in in, uh, in in the last in the last few weeks. And if a, if a metric has acted as support and or resistance recently, it makes it more likely to act as support or resistance in the near term. And the 100-day moving average comes into play uh, just north of 11,230. And if you do drop, drop below that, the big psychologically important 11,200. Um, sorry, sorry, the big cycle is important, 11,000, the big figure, could then potentially act as support. 
if we draw a line between the highs of June 2018 and, and July, we get this trend line along here. I know we traded north of it on couple of occasions in September, but we get this trend line along here. And we can see that we can see now that the market has managed to just about hold above that. And essentially, if we hold above that trend line, it's likely we could see a further move to the upside. We should be fall back below that trend line. That trend line resistance may come back, may, may start to act as trend line resistance yet again. Take a look at what's going on over in the US. Let's start off with the Dow Jones. Very similar picture to what we've seen on European markets. The Dow Jones uh, had a major bounce back uh, since late December. The market's been pushing higher. We've now moved firmly above the 200 moving average, this, re this red line here, which comes into play uh, at 25,097. Uh, we're currently expected to open uh, around 26,165. If the market can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the late October high of 26,278, this area here. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at testing the all-time highs in October. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the 27,000 number. If the market does manage to drift lower, we could see support come into play from this red line here, the 30 moving average, which, like I was saying, comes into play just south of 26,000. It's also worth keeping off for uh, this trend line here. If you draw a low between the lows of February 2018 and, uh, and April and, and May, you get this trend line along here. It was just respected reasonably well back in October and, and November. Granted, it was to trade below on a few occasions. But this, this trend line was acting as support in 2018, for most of 2018. It managed to act as resistance on a couple of occasions in 2019. And now it's back to potentially acting as support again. So if, if you do drop below the, uh, the trading moving average, keep an eye for this trend line. Which comes to play just south of the, uh, just just south, it's in around the, in around the um, twenty five thousand mark. Take a look now at the S and P five hundred. So I'll start off by drawing a trend line between the lows of February twenty sixteen and the lows of November twenty sixteen. We get this trend line along here. We can see. Similar to the Dow, it was well respected back in October and November. Once the market managed to actually break below it in December, we saw an aggressive sell off to the downside. Now we're looking at the subsequent bounce back. And similar to the Dow, this, the respective trend line for the S&P 500, it managed to act as resistance on, on a few occasions. Then it acted as support here, and it's been acting as support since. And now the S&P 500 is uh, back up. Is, um, Predicted to open at multi-month highs, levels not seen since early December. If you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 7,200, sorry, sorry, apologies, 2,817, 2,820 region, this price action here. Notice how on a few occasions the market tried to get above the uh, 2,820 mark, we couldn't quite get it above it. If you can manage to break above that, that would be fairly important significance given that that price area managed to act as resistance on a number of occasions at the back end of 2018. So if we can break above that, we could be looking at heading back up towards this area here, uh, the, the lows of mid of late of um, of mid September, uh, 2,866. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 2,900. And a move beyond that could take us up towards the all-time high of 2,940. Any moves to the downside may find some, some support of this um, of the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 2,748, and below that, back towards this trend line here in around the 2,700 mark. I'll take a look now. What's going on in gold? So gold's been in a fairly solid upward trend. Uh, it's been bouncing back since mid-October, but really since about mid-November, it's been in a solid upward trend, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. And while we hold above this area here in a 1320, it's likely to see further highs. Uh, it's likely to see the upward trend continue. And if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 1350 area. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this region in here at 1366. Uh, should we see a size of break below 1320, we could see support come into play in around the 1300 mark, this area here. And even if you drop below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards the 1276 area in around here. 
take a look at uh, the oils now, starting off at Brent. So the oil market, sort of like the equity market, has been pushing higher on the uh, on the news on the improved relations between the U.S. and China. There's been a fairly, there's been a reasonably strong, a reasonably strong correlation between the upward move in the equity markets and the rebound in oil. So starting off at Brent here, oil started to rebound in late late December, like equity markets, it has been pushing higher. We've gone on to print uh, multi-month highs, levels not seen since no, since November, so like in three-month highs. If you can't manage to press on higher here in Brent, we could be looking at targeting in this area here, um, the mid-November high, which comes into play at 68, spot 36. And I drifted a downside, we could see support coming to play from this line here. We can see it acted resistance on a few occasions at 63, spot 35. And even if you drop below that, Support might come into play from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 60 spot, 30, 60 spot 32. And obviously, if you look to kind of press on higher here, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 70 bucks a barrel, and then also keep keep my keep in mind of the the uh, 20 moving average uh, on the um, which comes into play at 70 spot 80. It's a fairly similar chart now for WTI, which to take a look at. WTI has also been bouncing back since late December. We can see here that even though the size of the moves have been relatively small, we have reached multi-month highs, a level's not seen since November for WTI. So it's it's clear that that at the markets um, continuing to to bounce back from the uh, from the major sell-off at the back end of 2018. If you can press higher from here. We could be looking at targeting this area in around here at 58 spot 10. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 60 bucks per barrel. A move to the downside may find some support in around here in at 55 spot 45. And below that, support might come into play from this blue line here at 51 spot 48. And of course, the move, move below that could take the psychologically important 50 bucks per barrel into sight. Take a look now what's going on at the euro versus the US dollar. So the euro dollar has been broadly speaking in a downward trend since mid uh, since mid January. We moved to the down we see a lower low, a lower high, and lower low. We have been bouncing back uh, in, in the last few sessions, but if you if you do look look to, if you do kind of press on higher from here, resistance may come into play in around the 114 area in around here. Uh, and then beyond that, in around the, the 115 area, and we can see here the high of of, uh, of, of January almost kind of coincides with this red line here, the 50, the, um, the 20 moving average, which comes to play in around in around the uh, the same area in around the one spot 15 16 area. Uh, should the uh, the wider trend with the downside continue, and should we take out this low here, we could be looking at heading back down towards one spot 12 16, and then if you, should we go below that? That could take us back down towards this area in around here at one spot 11, one spot 11, 10. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the pound versus the US dollar. So pound dollar has broadly been pushing higher since, uh, since mid November. So a couple of, sorry, mid, mid December rather. So for a couple of months, um, sterling has been moving to the upside. We've managed to retake the eternity moving average, this red line here, which comes to play in around 130. If you could hold above that, we could be looking at target heading back up towards the one spot 32 area. And he moves to the downside, may find some support in around this, this blue line here, the 50 moving average in at one spot 28.70, down to around 128. That is this region here may act as support. We can see on a few occasions the 50 moving average was traded below us, but, but, but the market managed to uh, manage to kind of hold on the most recent occasion and hold above it. So in that region, I would say between 128 and 1 spot 2862. I'll take a look now at the week ahead. And the week ahead article can be found on our platform. If you go, to, sorry, on our, on our website rather, if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you'll, you'll find all the, um, the updates that myself and the other analysts around the world produce. So starting with tomorrow, on Tuesday, uh, we have the Bank of England inflation, inflation hearings report. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, some of some of this, uh, some of these um, updates are now obsolete given the change in the news. But what is still relevant uh, is the testimony from Jerome Powell, uh, the head of the Federal Reserve, and that's coming out on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we have full year figures from ITB, 
On Wednesday and Friday, we have Canadian figures. We have Canadian CPI and uh, Canadian GDP. That's Wednesday and Friday. On Thursday, full year figures from Aston Martin. On Thursday, we also have full year figures from Rolls Royce. And looking ahead to um, Tuesday and Thursday, we have numbers uh, from a number of US companies JCPenney, Macy's, and Nordstrom. On Thursday, we have uh, fourth quarter US GDP numbers. And on Friday, we have the very different uh, uh, PMI manufacturing reports for many countries around the globe. Um, one last thing before I go, uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.